I'm Jordi Williamson. I'm a professor of mathematics at Sydney University. I like to think about it as being the poetry of the sciences. So you're trying to push the language to express things that are not quite expressible today in mathematics. Jordi works in representation theory. In other words, he spends his days thinking about very complicated structures that only exist in higher dimensions. You know what that stuff is, right? No matter how hard we try, we can't see eight dimensions. People work very hard to see four dimensions, but higher dimensions like eight or 24 or 248, we cannot see. But there's these structures in these dimensions that we can mathematically describe. He's so highly regarded in his field that at just 36, he's set to be inducted as the youngest living fellow of the Royal Society, the world's oldest and most prestigious scientific academy. I've seen you described as a genius. Are you actually a genius? No, I don't think so. I think that the thing that I can do is uh, I, I can think about things for a long time. I'm tenacious, but that's about it. How does it feel hearing your name uh, mentioned in the same sentence as people like Einstein and, and Newton? Oh, I mean, I don't take that seriously. I know that I'm nothing compared to these, these people. I suppose for a lot of people, particularly a lot of kids at school, when you're doing maths, you wonder why any of this is relevant. Yes. Because you think, I've got a phone, I've got a calculator, I've got a computer, uh, I'll never use this once I leave high school. I think that the world is becoming more mathematical, and I think that it gives you a way of understanding the world that's very, very powerful and very useful. Like when I'm walking down the street, I see mathematical phenomena everywhere. Give us a picture of what you're seeing. So for example, when I see smoke, I see Brownian motion. When I see clouds, I see some differential equation describing the wind. When I see the way that cars are moving, you see various mathematical phenomena. You see it in nature everywhere, the way that leaves grow, the way that a fern curls is hyperbolic geometry. It's really throughout our world. Of course, much of the time he's grappling with shapes and systems that we can't even see in our three-dimensional world. What's it like when you get a glimpse in your mind of what that bigger shape is? Oh, phenomenal. It's just such a wonderful feeling, especially when you've been trying hard and things don't make sense for so long and you haven't been understanding for so long. It's the most incredibly satisfying feeling. There can't be that many people living on the planet who get those glimpses. I think people, many people get them, but at many, for example, the, the satisfaction of solving a Sudoku is similar. It's just, you've been maybe working on the Sudoku for a few hours, whereas sometimes we're working on a problem for 10 years. So the satisfaction is slightly greater, but it's the same, same feeling. It feels like you give all of yourself to these problems. Oh, completely. And not just intellectually, but emotionally. Yeah, completely. As well. Yeah. I think you have to, to some extent. Do you love the problems? Do you hate the problems? What's the what's no, I that love relationship? Them. I love them. I, I love them to death. Even when you can't solve them? It's something very, very beautiful about the world uh, and you would like to understand. And somehow it's so much fun just to, just to play with them. Like, imagine a very complicated Rubik's Cube. It's just very fun to play with. So it doesn't matter if you solve it or not. You must be incredible with a Rubik's Cube. I've actually, I've actually never solved a Rubik's Cube <laughs> and I'm saving, I'm saving it to when I'm sick for a month or something because people always want to explain it to, to explain to me how to do it and uh, I'm like, no, I don't want to be explained how to do it. I want to solve it myself but I want, to, I want the time at some point in my life to work it out. Jordi says maths makes the world go round from our phones to Google to the way we see everything. A lot of young people, a lot of kids at school don't like maths, don't want to do maths. What do you say to them? Uh, maths is really fun uh, if you find the right way into it and nowadays there's many more ways into it than there were 30 years ago. There's fantastic YouTube channels. Um, you know, even if you're a bit disillusioned at school, there's a beautiful world out there. Um, don't get dispirited. You sound like the biggest geek, so... <laughs> <laughs>